Hi everyone, my name is Andra Stanoyu and you're listening to the Healthy Debate Show here on UK Health Radio, the real feel-good radio. The Healthy Debate Show has always been about bringing forward topics about mental health, physical health, well-being, but more importantly about alternative methods of healing from traditional methods to more unconventional approaches. And today's show is unique as we will discuss about scalar energy or scalar light with Tom Palladino. Tom is a holistic medical expert, a scientist, a humanitarian who works at quantum level to help the body heal and be in balance. I'm very excited about today's show. So, hi, Tom. Welcome to the Healthy Debate Show. How are you today? All is well. Thank you for the invitation. Looking forward to this discussion. Absolutely. Please tell us about your work, about your background. It's really fascinating. I was scrolling through your website and I found so many interesting things. So, tell us about your work. Sure. I work with scalar energy. Um, some people call that Tessa energy or zero point energy. It's not electricity. And when I'm working with this energy, it's profound. And it really gives you a, a mastery or some type of controlled dominion over nature. So working with scalar energy instruments, I have a command, if you will. And in so doing that command, that dominion over nature allows me to produce favorable results. I've always been enthralled with this science, scalar energy, and what it means to mankind once we embrace this technology and move forward. All right, so what does scalar uh, energy mean and where does it originate? Or maybe um, you can describe to us um, its nature in, in more details. Sure, scalar energy originates from the sun and the stars. It's a divine energy, a divine energy. And it originates from the sun and the stars. Now, with that, this is the energy that powers the universe. Scalar energy gives rise, if you will, to all stellar activity. And if that's the case, then scalar energy really is the animating force of the universe. If you look at the universe, you have to say, where does the light, where do the instructions come from? Well, the light, the instructions come from stars. And with that in mind, we're, we're working now with the primal force of the universe. This is so, so important to understand that scalar energy is the primal force of the universe. So how does, can you still hear me, Tom? Yes. 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 So how does color energy transmute matter? Um, it's the command that scalar energy allows uh, me to have. We can transmute matter, meaning what? We can change one molecular form into another. So scalar energy really is instructive energy. <clears throat> and I can instruct this energy to <clears throat> look at the body, <clears throat> a person or an animal, and rearrange the elements in a person or an animal. And in so doing, I can rearrange those elements into an antioxidant or an amino acid. So consider what I'm saying. Through scalar energy instructions, I can reassemble, I can transform the existing elements in the body to a micronutrient, again, such as an antioxidant, a vitamin, or a mineral. So this is the command of scalar energy. This command allows us to control nature. So does this mean that it's, it has an important contribution to healing, for example, if someone is suffering from cancer or mental health issues? Can scalar energy help us? Yes, it can. Scalar energy can help us <clears throat> in many ways, in many ways. So this is a holistic tool. This is, if you will, what some people might call quantum wellness. And I use that term because it's all energetic. I don't work with people. <clears throat> I work at a distance, if you will. In other words, this is an energetic process. I work with people around the world by way of their photograph. So a scanner energy instrument <laughs> works in the quantum field by way of a person's photograph. So this, does this mean that it can um, um, help us uh, balance the energy due to stress, for example, just by looking at a photograph and starting to, to work with that energy? Is that correct? Yes, exactly. Now, I want to underscore this point. 
when I'm working with a scalar energy instrument, <clears throat> the, the animating force and the intelligence is this divine intelligence. It's not as if I have to program this instrument. Why? Because it's a divine intelligence. This instrument knows what your nutritional deficiency is. This instrument will assemble the vitamins, the minerals, the antioxidants that you need. So this is a divine programming. Per se, I do not program this intelligence. It is, it is programmed by God. And with that, it's fail safe. It's a guaranteed process. So you mentioned uh, God, uh, Tom, into this, and I, I have to ask you because, of course, our listeners are some that believe in God, some that don't believe in God or believe in the non-existence of God. Um, if that's the case, if they don't have a spiritual connection with God, can they still benefit from scalar energy? Of course, of course. God gives his blessing to everybody. For instance, I frequently treat pets, dogs, cats, horses, etc., those pets always enjoy an improvement in their health, always. So a dog, a cat, a horse does not know it's being treated, I don't think so, with scalar energy. Nonetheless, this energy will improve their health. Why? Well, again, it's a primal force. This energy obeys the laws of nature. And in so doing, I can improve animal health as well as human health by way of photographs. So this this is very interesting because um, it's 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 very interesting how you know almost you don't have to have a spiritual life because you mentioned of course you know horses don't know that they're being treated with scalar energy but it still it still works so let's let's take this example um, maybe you have actually practical examples when you worked with uh, with a person who suffered from physical health and what was the situation you know how did they come to you what was the process how long did it take just give us a bit of an insight on a real life case that um you you worked with uh, in sure. the past thank you well right now we're working with an hiv aids clinic in delhi india and this is topical because every week I receive two to 300 photographs of people from Delhi, India that are HIV positive. Now, the results have been stellar. And the reason I mentioned this, this is a clinical study out of Delhi, India. We've already treated 3,000, close to 4,000 people in Delhi, India who are infected with the HIV virus. And everybody has reported that they're feeling better. And these people say that their CD4 lymphocyte, their CD4 count, is now increasing. And many of them are saying they, they're gaining weight and they no longer have symptoms of HIV viral disease. So, put all of that together, this is very promising. And again, this is an isolated community in Delhi, India in which we've already worked with 3,500 people who are HIV positive. Very promising. So when you say we, does this mean that you work with the team? Are you you're working on your own? How does it work in practice? Yeah, you have to have volunteers out in Delhi, India, who will present this, then take the photographs of people and submit their photographs. So we have a team in Delhi, India, and it is our goal to treat everybody, the 9,000, 10,000 people at this HIV AIDS clinic. It's called Om Prakash. And the reason this is so, so pertinent is because everybody that we've treated at Om Prakash HIV AIDS clinic, everybody feels better. And some of their uh, uh, PCR tests have come back not detected, undetectable for the HIV virus. So, Put all of that together, this is very promising. And after treating 3,000, 4,000 people, you know, this can't be an accident. But this so is not an accident. How long does it usually take, you know, from the moment you receive the photograph until the results start to, to show? You know, in the first day that I work with people, the first day I experienced this eradication of a microbe, a germ. So it only takes one day one session to break down the HIV virus, 
one day. And then on a daily basis, we're, we're working with people and we're assembling nutrients. And that's an ongoing process because people need nu nutrition, nutritional support on a daily basis. But as far as a microbe is concerned, it only takes one day to eradicate a microbe. So if this is such a great thing, and of course, you know, I, I believe you that the results are, are measurable. Why did it take us so long to figure out, to discover scalar um, energy? Or it might be that I haven't heard of it um, until I started to have conversations with you. So, so tell us about, you know, for how long has That's, the world known about scalar energy? That's a good, good point. Nikola Tesla was working with scalar energy over a hundred years ago. And he had developed a scalar energy tower in which he could broadcast energy, free energy to the world. So this was well known over a hundred years ago. Well, to be quite blunt, uh, Andres, this is suppressed. This is suppressed technology. And the reason you don't hear about it today is because it's of such great benefit that this will upset in many ways uh, the economic model or the military industrial complex, call it what you will. It's a technology that will, will make obsolete much of the existing technology. So you're referring specifically here maybe to a pharmaceutical industry that of course promotes medical treatment uh, rather than alternative methods or... Yes, exactly. Yes. Consider what I'm saying. Many people that I've treated, say, for HIV, and this is of their decision, are no longer on any antivirals. Their PCR tests come back undetectable. They feel better. Many people, many people say, well, Tom, I don't have the virus. My PCR tests are undetectable. I feel great. And so this is a change for them. No longer do they have a need for pharmaceutical products. Well, that's that's a benefit to mankind. But again, this is a different economic model. Um, the ability to eradicate pathogens will present a new economic model. And some people sadly will fight against that benefit for mankind. You mentioned at the beginning of our conversation the fact that scalar energy can help uh, animals, can help people. And it, it just came to, to me that the idea of, and it's not an idea, it's the reality of um, the change in climate, you know, the, the environment. Can scalar energy influence the environment or climate change or any um, other aspects um, that are related to environment? Yeah, I, I wish it could. I, I have not developed that process. But I will say this, that scalar energy is the animating force of, of weather patterns, of meteorological events. So once we firmly understand this energy, we will have dominion over nature. And so my work is, is still in its, uh, it, it, its nascent state, if you will. I will hope other researchers will learn from me and then expand upon this. So I'm trying to get the word out. Do, do I think that scalar energy in the future could um, uh, modulate the weather? Yes. So is scalar energy um, applied only by professionals? Do you have to have a certain uh, type of qualification or a knowledge in a specific um, yeah. field? Or can anyone do that? My, my, very good. my work is groundbreaking. I have unique instruments, and I believe I'm the only one in the world with these instruments. Hence, my results are unique. Now, with that said, um, <clears throat> I wish others would take up my work, but that is not yet uh, proven to be the case. So as far as I'm concerned, with my unique instruments, I'm the only one in the world that can achieve these results. So tell us about the instruments, because you mentioned quite a few times, and, and I'm very intrigued. Is it like a real instrument that you can you can touch and feel or is it more of a method of a type of approach uh, of me, um, or maybe mental work that that you're doing what is this instrument that um you, you've mentioned a few times yeah they they are indeed uh, scientifically engineered instruments 
um, there, there's a great deal of uh, engineering excellence that goes into creating these instruments. My predecessor, a man by the name of Galen Hieronymus, developed scalar energy instruments over 40, 50 years ago. And he was very successful, Galen Hieronymus. And in many ways, I'm continuing on with his work. But these are uh, uh, calibrated instruments. They do perform a work function that is repeatable. That's the key. These instruments are dependable. And so if I ask this instrument to break apart the herpes virus, it will do that. It's a repeatable process. So you also mentioned the fact that you worked, you work with photographs. Yeah, you mentioned the clinic in India, and I'm, and I'm very pleased you're, you're doing great work in India because um, India is our top um, country. So the list we have the most, uh, the highest number of listeners from from India. So hopefully other clinics will get in touch with you and uh, will be interested in uh, in the work that you do with scalar energy. So based on that, based on the fact that you're working with uh, photographs. Does this mean that scalar energy is not bound by by time or distance? Yes. What does it actually? Yeah. Yeah, that, that's very astute. So what's my point? Scalar energy transcends time and space. If you can imagine, this energy is omnipresent. It's everywhere in the world. So there's really no point A, point B. It it floods the universe, and because of that, it's omnipresent. If something's omni omnipresent, it's everywhere. So it, this energy transcends time and space, and hence time does not factor into this, this energy. It's timeless. You're everywhere instantaneously. So I, I want the audience to really grasp that concept. If this energy pervades the universe, if this energy blankets the universe, there is no point A and point B. Everything is flooded with scalar energy. And if that's the case, well, it transcends time accordingly, because there there is no specific point in time that you could adjudicate with this energy. It's it's timeless. So that's a lot of people call that quantum entanglement or the quantum realm. Indeed, we transcend time and space. Yes. So. Does, does this mean that, for example, you are also working with, with chakras and meridian uh, points? Is this something that, you know, scalar energy can uh, can balance, for example? Yes, yes. What do we mean by that? Well, scalar energy is able to balance our, our brain waves, our psyche, our seven chakras. Now, that in and of itself is the quantum realm, <clears throat> our psyche, our mood. Our attitude, that transcends time and space. So what I've discovered with my instruments, I can correct an imbalance. I'm able to balance, if you will, um, our seven chakras, our brain waves. That in and of itself lends itself to the notion that this energy transcends time and space. Yes, it's instructive. This instructive energy can re-instruct our brain waves. It can re-instruct our chakras. The results are people have a greater sense of mental well-being, psychological well-being. I've experienced in the past some people who've signed up for our program say they're not, they're no longer, uh, uh, if you will, have that proclivity to alcohol or recreational drugs. Some people say that this this energy has allowed them to give up procrastination or it's lifted their depression. Now that is not my ability as an operator that's way beyond my ability so it seems to be inherent in this energy this energy seems to be inherent and it's able to correct our chakras it's able to correct our brain waves and the results for many people are quite favorable it it lends itself to a more positive outlook on life it addresses our emotional uh drawbacks it addresses our uh uh, if you will, are conscious, the ability to decide between right and wrong. Now, that in and of itself, it really, uh, if you will, lends itself to the notion that this is an energy that is instructive once again. It can instruct our brainwaves. To me, that's fascinating. 
No, it is absolutely fascinating, uh, fascinating, and I'm, I'm very interested to find out about um, your program. So, because it, 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 uh, um, it's very interesting how you you mentioned the work you've done with um, with individuals about you know to change um, uh, the imbalances in their brain to improve their mental health, their physical health. But I'm also very interested to see if, for example, Scalar Energy uh, works with with larger groups. So let's have a few minutes of commercial breaks, and then when we're back, I would like us to get back on the conversation about working in groups about your program and I'm very interested about the effects of, of scalar energy so we'll be back in a few minutes with Thomas Paladino to discuss about scalar energy and we're back with Tom we're discussing scalar energy and Tom before the break he was telling us about the fantastic work that he has done with individuals to uh, to produce a balance in their brain so Tom you mentioned um, your program Tell me a bit more about your program. Where can we find your program and how easy it is to apply or not so easy to apply? And um, I have so many questions, so I just need to, I need to, to calm down a bit and just to let you talk now. So tell me a bit about your program. Thank you. Well, in order to introduce this to the world, I offer free sessions on my website. Anybody in the world can visit our website and upload their photograph. We treat people for free for 15 days. The website is scalarlight.com. And if you take us up on your our offer, again, there's no obligation. On a daily basis, we'll identify and eradicate microbes, such as viruses and bacteria and parasites. On a daily basis, we'll balance your chakras, your brain waves, your seven chakras. And on a daily basis, we will work with your nutritional constitution. We're able to identify and to assemble over 350 nutrients. And we do that likewise on a daily basis. So in synopsis, we can eradicate germs, microbes, we can balance the chakras and we can create micronutrients. And after 15 days of sessions, many people say that this has helped them immensely, that they feel better, that this was a, a, a worthwhile experience. And that's what we want to do. It's difficult to introduce something that's brand new. This is groundbreaking. I don't think anybody in the world is, is mimicked my work. So in order to present this to the world, I have to uh, be very realistic. And my realism is allowing everybody to experience 15 days of free sessions. And thank you, thank you very much for for introducing us to to your program. I think it's it's really important, you know, to be flexible when something um, this interesting comes on the market, and and to understand that people first need to 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 have a good um, understanding of the work right before they actually start. Um, start using scalar energy um, more often. Um, I'm, I'm, I've been always very passionate about understanding ways of healing trauma. That's something very personal to me. And I'm always trying to find alternative ways um, apart from, you know, psychotherapy maybe, which is very helpful, of course. I've, I've talked about this multiple times in my show. Um, also about, you know, um, traditional ways of, of treating trauma. If we have, for example, someone that part of a family that has gone through a traumatic event, let's just say someone in their family passed away tragically and the trauma is there in the family, is there a possibility that scalar energy can help the family? So a, a smaller group of people that kind of have a similar um, background and similar yeah. feelings in, referring to a specific event in their lives. Yeah, you know, that's a good point. Many people have told me that they experienced generational healing. What does yeah. that mean? There, there may have been drawbacks. There may have been a family issue going back generations. And many people say that this has broken that generational hold, that generational, if you will, uh, stigma that they live by. So for whatever reason, and this is what people report to me, it's not my opinion, People say that they're able to come to terms, perhaps with their parents, their grandparents, and going back generations, they're able to reverse what some people might call a generational roadblock. Call it what you will. We all deal with that. We, we are inherent are the generations previous to us. We inherit their DNA. We inherit, in some fashion, their decisions. 
Yeah, it's it's very interesting because you brought a, um, a, a transgenerational, um, and I think they're patterns, isn't it? They're patterns because if you have, for example, you uh, you come from a community that has been really shaken by specific events, right? You yeah. have um, maybe the. Um, uh, I know I don't know just terrorist attack is the first thing that comes to my mind right so the community that's that's in there in the vicinity of, of the attack will have a common ground right will have a common experience so it's very interesting to to understand how scalar energy actually expands outside an individual and it can it can change these patterns and you mentioned quite a few times it changes the mood isn't it yes yes isn't that profound you know, I, there's no way I can in any way influence a person's generational drawbacks. I cannot influence a person's mood. There's no way I can possibly change their depression or their anxiety. But this energy seems to change their depression, their anxiety. I remember when I first started working with this energy, there was a young lady who, who did not want to eat. She was anorexic. And after we treated her, she started eating. She had a more sensible diet. Well, I, I didn't do anything. The energy corrected that imbalance. And she went on to live a more normal life eating, not starving herself. So do you think there's also a placebo component in this? Because color energy can be very interesting and very attractive. For example, I'm playing that the devil's advocate now, Tom, so forgive me. Um, but do you think there, there is, to some extent, a placebo effect in um, scalar energy? Uh, I'm going to say yes, and I'm going to say gladly so, because a lot of people need, uh, if you will, a guidepost. And if scalar energy, if this energy is a guidepost, if this energy helps them lead a, a more balanced lifestyle, then so be it. Then let it be a, a placebo effect. Uh, uh, my main point is I want to see people thrive. I want to see people benefit and whatever whatever agency is is in effect here, what whatever mechanism is in effect, I'm all for that. The important thing is that people thrive, that their health improves. This this was one of my 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 questions, but I'm I'm glad you kind of touched on it. I was thinking about your mission because you sound very passionate about scalar energy so so my thought was okay so what's storm final mission you know or maybe initial mission because maybe this is just the beginning of other projects right that will will benefit the yeah. humanity so if you are to summarize your your mission what would you say that is tom yeah to summarize this is free energy scalar energy is from the sun and the stars and scalar energy is a better way it's a better way of living and we're going to leave behind coal and gas and oil and nuclear power. And we're gonna go into a new age of free energy from the sun and the stars. And then there's other, uh, if you will, uh, ancillary programs to this, such as the quantum medicine, the quantum healing that I've experienced. Eventually you're gonna see scan energy as our new, if you will, communication system. We, we won't need cell phones anymore. We'll, we'll be using scalar energy to communicate. So this is the game changer. I keep saying that. that scanner energy will change the way we live. And I'm looking forward to that day. So when you started thinking about scalar energy, did you did you have a laboratory? How did you start? Uh, uh, I don't know. I'm just imagining you as a scientist and how you put the pieces together. So uh, yeah. do you have any unique experiences you have witnessed? working uh, with, with scalar energy in a laboratory or any specific uh, situations that you think, oh, that that's fantastic. I'm doing some great yeah. work with humanity. Yeah, I was fortunate enough back in the 90s to have met the Hieronymus family. He was the one of the few bona fide scalar energy researchers. Anyway, when I met with this family, the Hieronymus family, they educated me. They educated me as to the benefits of scalar energy. And frankly, I was awestruck. I was awestruck with their work, their accomplishments. Well, in many ways, they turned over their instruments and their notes to me, and they knew that I would continue on with their legacy in some way, in some fashion. So that was my foothold. I met the Hieronymus family, 
one of the few, uh, in Gail and Hieronymus, one of the few uh, bona fide scalar energy researchers, and I learned from him. So I did not have to start from scratch, so to speak. And, um, and therefrom, I've taken his instruments and I've perfected his instruments. To this point, we have a perfected Hieronymus model, uh, and the results are stellar. And I'll point out to the audience that Hieronymus and Tesla were some of the few bona fide scalar energy researchers. Someday, both Hieronymus and Tesla deserve a Nobel Prize for their discoveries in scalar energy. What would you say was the biggest lesson you've learned working with this family? <clears throat> that you have to be open-minded. When I worked with a, her name was Sarah Hieronymus, the wife of the deceased inventor, what she presented to me was quite different. And, and again, this is not electricity, so you cannot in any way equate this energy with electricity. And when she educated me as to the function of this energy and its ability, you have to start from ground zero. It's a new science and you have to be humble enough to learn this new science from scratch. And that's what I did. And I asked God for humility so I can learn this. You're not going to see a scalar energy tutorial at the collegiate level. You're not going to see a college class at the university that goes into depth with scalar energy. This is all groundbreaking research. And I will also uh, underscore this point, Andres, uh, this research is, is suppressed. If this is free energy, it's a threat. It's a threat to the establishment. Did you get a chance to look at the effects in uh, on long, long term? For example, um, are these effects um, long lasting? Because I don't know exactly when you started your research and if you managed to, if you started long enough to actually monitor this in time and see if the effects may be increased or maybe decreased with time. Any observations on that? I would say most people see an improvement in their health over a long period of time that the greater majority of people. One of the reasons I say that, our instruments are able to detect and eradicate over 400,000 species of pathogens, germs. Now, if you consider over the course of a lifetime how many people are infected with microbes, germs, and our ability is to eradicate those microbes, those germs, well, people experience a, a rather quick and a, and a rather... Uh, if you will, salubrious change of disposition. Uh, their health improves. So is it long standing? Yes, I believe so, especially with the pathogenic lens, because once we destroy a pathogen, unless you're reinfected, you, you, you cannot you cannot suffer again from that pathogen. When you mentioned pathogen, I couldn't help but thinking about um, COVID. So I might enter a controversial topic now, but you can escape, Tom, if you don't want to, no, no, I want <laughs> to go to into the topic. Yeah. So I'm just I'm just curious if you if you worked with um, if you work during the COVID period and you try to use scalar energy to improve people's lives and uh, create a different type of balance um, whilst they were suffering uh, from COVID. Yeah. Very good. So. During the two years of the pandemic, I worked with myself and family members, and none of us were in harm's way. Um, I did not ever uh, experience the, the COVID-19 uh, virus. My family and friends were under um, treatments on, on a daily basis, and they did not experience the effects of COVID. Now, keep in mind, we can eradicate germs, including COVID-19 virus, on a daily basis. So <clears throat> you really don't have a, um, those symptoms that, that manifest within a period of 24 hours. If we're able to break apart, if we're able to transmute a virus on a daily basis, you're not going to have the, the full force of the symptoms in such a short period of time. So I go on record that working through my photographs, working with these instruments, I can easily detect the COVID-19 virus through a person's photograph, through their force field. And I can send energy into that force field, the person's photograph, and uh, identify COVID-19 and, and disassemble it in that quantum state. 
Well, that's that's very interesting because I don't know anyone who hasn't had uh, coffee to come. We live in in London, and in London it has been quite quite tough for us. So it's very interesting to hear that you you've done work with the, on yourself with your family, and you managed to stay away from from COVID. But whilst you were talking about that, um, I was thinking because you mentioned photograph. So did you use your own? Did you use photographs for yourself, or doesn't it work if? You do it in the mirror, for example. Forgive uh-huh. me if this is a silly question, but I'm just interested about the importance of the photograph. So you yes. do have to have a photograph. It doesn't work differently. Am I correct? Did I understand correctly? That's correct. What I do every day, people will email us their photograph, and I'll print their photograph out, print their photograph out, and treat that printed photograph. So this is how scalar energy works. A person, if you will, bi-locates on their photograph. I never treat people. I treat photographs, which are their bi-located version. So this is the new science in which people can be two places at once with a scalar energy instrument. So no matter where you live, once I print out your photograph and place it in my instrument, you bi-locate to my instrument in Florida. So can, for example, someone can you can you influence uh, someone's health against their their wish, for example, if you happen to have someone's picture, if I send you my picture now, but I don't want to be treated with scalar energy, mm-hmm. does it still work? Yes, it does, because it follows the laws of nature. The laws of nature are immutable. So this is what we ask. People have to read the website and make an informed decision to be treated. I don't want to work with anybody without their consent. Do, do you think scalar energy can be dangerous? Yes. Um, Tesla referred to scalar energy and he used to allude to a death ray. In other words, scalar energy would be so powerful that it could produce harm. It's a, almost a, if you will, a burst of energy that could harm. So. I am very careful about what I say and what I release to the general public. I don't want this to be used as a weapon. No, absolutely. And I think it's important you mentioned that on the website, people can find uh, all the details they need to ensure that, you know, your work is it has the best intentions and that's the end result, right? The, the, the wish to support and to heal to some extent the people who come to you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. So this, you know, this, let's just be blunt. I, God has given me a great gift, but it carries a tremendous responsibility. So I ask your listening audience to keep me in prayer. It's a tremendous blessing, but it's a tremendous responsibility. Tom, let's, let's take a few minutes of break. Um, but um, because when we're back, I would like us to summarize the benefits of um, scalar energy. Believe it or not, we're close to the end of the show. I just don't know when when <laughs> 40 minutes uh, have gone. Uh, so we'll be back with Tom Paladino to discuss uh, scalar energy or scalar light. And we're back with Tom. We're discussing scalar light or scalar energy. Tom, um, what do you think is the future of scalar energy? I remember when I was trying to get in touch with you, you were busy with a conference and you were busy, uh, you know, making the uh, making scalar energy very popular. So what is the future? What do you think? If the world will embrace this energy and promulgate it, it means that we will finally have free energy, free, clean energy that will change our lifestyle for the better. It will liberate mankind. And frankly, this this energy, it's free um, consideration, it's free energy. And with that into consideration, this will break the monopolies around the world. Many of the monopolies around the world do not benefit the people, they just benefit the few at the top. Well, if you introduce free energy, that will break the monopolies. So are you planning um, to to maybe create some training or design some sort of, you know, packages to share your knowledge with other professionals, maybe 
interested in in adopting um, in their practice as an alternative um, healing. For example, let's just say you have a therapist that's interested in scalar energy. Can they get in touch with you to for you to teach them what you know? Do you have any any plans in in this direction? I, I'm always willing to teach people. I want people to to understand this. But the drawback is this: these instruments they, they are specifically calibrated, and it's very um, very detail oriented. So I'm not in the position to create to manufacture instruments. But at least in part, I want to uh, mention uh, what I know. I want to impart my theories and my uh, understanding of scalar energy. I think that's very important. So before I die, I want there to be a body of evidence as to my work. So just to summarize, Tom, what would you say that the top three benefits of using scalar light for healing? Yeah, the top three benefits, it will balance your uh, emotions, it will balance your seven chakras. That's very important. It's a spiritual or it's a, a, a mental balancing. Uh, number two, scalar energy will eradicate germs, viruses, parasites, fungi. And the third component, it will create, it will transmute, actually create micronutrients. And those three uh, processes are offered to the general public on their website. It's a 15-day free session. On a daily basis, you'll be treated for those three modalities. I ask people to consider it. Visit our website, read a few of the articles, and then if you're inclined, email us your photograph. There is no obligation. This is my way of introducing this to the world. Tom, thank you so much for your time today. It's been really insightful. I'm really interested um, in, in you know, follow follow up with you and to see how how things evolve. I'm very pleased to hear that your work has had great impact um, on people and that you reached um, India and you're starting to see really important results. So uh, I wish you best of luck with your method. I wish you best of luck with the work that you're doing. And um, hopefully in, in a couple of years, you'll be able to come back and tell us how uh, how much change you've made in the world. God bless, and I, I look forward to that follow-up conversation. Thank you.